In this video, I'll teach you everything that you need to know about purine salvage. This is the third and final video in the series of videos about purines and pyrimidines. A brief overview, purine salvage refers to the biochemical pathway that recycles purine bases into purine nucleotides. Simply put, the body has to have a way to go backwards and recycle the purine bases back into the purine nucleotides so that purine salvage and purine synthesis can operate seamlessly and the body can create all of the different molecules that it needs. The starting point for purine salvage is going to be guanine, hypoxanthine, or adenine. So let's get started there. On this slide, you see the free bases, guanine, hypoxanthine, and adenine, and I've shown them here in green. Let's start with guanine and hypoxanthine because those two are much more important than adenine in terms of understanding them for the purposes of exams. So guanine will get recycled back into the nucleotide GMP, and hypoxanthine, which again is a free base, will get recycled back into the nucleotide IMP. And I've shown the nucleotides on this slide in blue. The enzyme that recycles both the free base guanine as well as the free base hypoxanthine is HGPRT, which stands for hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase. Just know it as HGPRT. So the first high yield point to know is that this is the key enzyme. HGPRT converts both guanine and hypoxanthine, which are free bases, into GMP and IMP, respectively, which are nucleotides. Once you recycle back into GMP or IMP, GMP and IMP can each be turned into the nucleoside, guanosine and inosine, respectively. So very, very high yield and the most high yield part of this video to understand. You're starting in purine salvage with the free bases, guanine and hypoxanthine, and you're converting them or recycling them, if you will, salvaging them, which is why this is called purine salvage, back into GMP and IMP. The enzyme that converts guanine and hypoxanthine into GMP and IMP is HGPRT. So obviously, because we're talking about one enzyme doing two different reactions, that enzyme is extremely high yield. As you'll see in just a few slides, that enzyme is also very clinically relevant because if there's a problem with it, we get a certain disease. More on that in just a second. Now looking at the right side of this slide, we also have the free base adenine. Adenine can combine with PRPP, which we've seen now in several videos, and will become the nucleotide AMP. The enzyme that converts adenine back into AMP to recycle it is APRT, which stands for adenine phosphoribosyl transferase. So as you can see on this slide, the purpose or the goal of purine salvage is to salvage, meaning to break down and reutilize components of the free bases guanine, hypoxanthine, and adenine. Now let's take a look at the left-hand side of this slide. Both guanine and hypoxanthine, if they're not going to be used for recycling, can be turned into xanthine. And then once you have xanthine, xanthine gets converted by xanthine oxidase into uric acid. So something that's very high yield to know for exams and extremely clinically relevant to know in real life is that there's a disease that happens if HGPRT is knocked out and defective. So if we knock out the enzyme HGPRT, which under normal circumstances would recycle guanine back to GMP and recycle hypoxanthine back to IMP, we cannot go in the direction of the purine salvage pathway. In other words, those two now dotted curvy lines cannot occur. You cannot go from, guan from guanine to GMP, nor can you go from hypoxanthine to IMP because obviously the enzyme responsible for that salvage is broken. So as a result of an HGPRT deficiency, we are now shunted in the direction of xanthine. So guanine, instead of becoming salvaged into GMP, will get converted to xanthine. And likewise, hypoxanthine, instead of being salvaged into IMP, will be shunted and converted into xanthine. The more xanthine you produce, the more uric acid you produce. 
because xanthine naturally gets converted to uric acid through an enzyme called xanthine oxidase. So in other words, if we knock out HGPRT, not only do we move in the wrong direction and cannot do purine salvage, but we increase our levels of uric acid. And when we increase our levels of uric acid to the extent that you would increase it in the case of an HGPRT deficiency, we get some clinical symptoms because all of that uric acid has to go somewhere in the body. So the disease that I've just described to you is known as Lesch-Nyhan syndrome. Lesch-Nyhan syndrome is an HGPRT defect. So we cannot recycle guanine or hypoxanthine, and instead it shunts the biochemical pathway in the direction of uric acid. So we have an extremely excessive amount of pathologic uric acid. Now this disease is X-linked recessive, and the symptoms that we see are intellectual disability, self-mutilation, aggression, sodium urate crystals in the urine, and that's due to hyperuricemia, so excess uric acid will become urinated out and will precipitate into sodium urate crystals, gout, because all of that uric acid has to go somewhere and it's going to end up in different joints, and dystonia. So if we think about this disease, Lesch-Nyhan syndrome is too much uric acid. And you can think about this, although it's somewhat incorrect to say it this way, but you can think about this as excess uric acid in the brain causes intellectual disability, aggression, and self-mutilation. Excess uric acid in the urine causes sodium urate crystals, which appear orange. And excess uric acid in the muscles and joints causes gout and dystonia. I'm taking liberties by describing it that way, but that's how you can think about this to help memorize the symptoms. The treatment for Lesch-Nyhan syndrome is going to be allopurinol, and if you can't use allopurinol, then you would choose on the exam fabux fabuxostat. The reason that these are the treatments is because both allopurinol and fabuxostat inhibit the enzyme xanthine oxidase, which converts xanthine into uric acid. So in the case of Lesch-Nyhan syndrome, if the HGPRT enzyme is knocked out and the biochemistry is shunting in the direction of xanthine, if you inhibit the enzyme that converts it into uric acid, then you won't get a buildup of uric acid in the various parts of the body, which are responsible for the debilitating symptoms of Lesch-Nyhan syndrome. The thing to keep in mind for the purposes of USMLE or COMLEX is that usually when they're going to go after this on an exam, they're going to do it clinically. They're going to describe the symptoms to you. They might give you sodium urate as a buzzword. Something that you definitely want to be thinking about is the hyperuricemia causing those sodium urate crystals. Because a lot of times what they'll do is they'll describe a very young baby or pediatric patient with this disease, and they'll show you a picture of a diaper with some orangey looking substance in it. And so if you see an image on your exam of a diaper with like an orange red spot in it, stop what you're doing and pick Lesch-Nyhan syndrome because what they're showing you is sodium urate crystals that were urinated out into a diaper. And because of the chemical appearance and composition of uric acid, those sodium urate crystals appear orange. So that's very, very important. But this video is everything that you need to know about purine salvage. Very, very high yield and clinically relevant, of course, is Lesch-Nyhan syndrome. But understand the biochemistry, understand the disease, and please understand the treatment. Good luck.